What's going on folks, it's Richie Rich back yet again and um, today I'm going to be bringing you a review of Batman The Judge Dread Collection Part 3. Be sure to check it out. Batman Judge Dredd The Ultimate Riddle. This was the third entry of the Batman Judge Dredd collection and this was published in 1995. The story was done by John Wagner and Grant Wagner and the illustration and artwork was done by Carl Critchlow and Dermot Power. Cover up was also done by Carl Critchlow. So the story starts out with Batman on the chase for or on the chase on Riddler. Riddler left a clue in um uh, area in Gotham City which the riddle says to baited hook with baited breath our hero rushes to his death and sweet releases one final jest is granted in his dying breath. Batman actually uh sees this on chase him. Once Batman is actually in in contact with Riddler, he's able to just take him down. But before that happens, both Batman and Riddler get transferred to an alternate alternate dimension. After being transported to another dimension, quite similar to how Batman was transported to Mega City One in Judgment on Gotham, he awakes to he awakes in the cell with uh, with Riddler, and just opposite him is none other than Judge Dredd. On the next page there is a pretty cool shot of Batman and Riddler in their own cell. Judge Dredd in a cell with an uh, uh guessing a prisoner from Mega City One. And there's a there's like a, a several other mutants from different universes who have also been captured and been placed in these prisoner cells. Whilst at this point, Batman is using one of the using his laser from his utility belt to try uh, break out of his cell. Uh, whilst there, he's also asking Riddler, "Does he know anything about this?" And interest, interesting, interestingly enough, Riddler tells Batman, "You'll see," which actually tells us that R uh, Riddler actually has a pivotal role. What is actually taking place at this particular time? Shortly after, the attention turns to below where a few guards are playing trumpets and introducing the Emperor, Zero. They're introduced to the, um, the conspirator who, is, who brought all these, um, all these uh, different uh, characters from these different uh, universes to fight in his little tournament. Uh, his name is Zero. And he tells, uh, he says, "Green combatants, now you are all assembled. Welcome to the killing ground." So the killing ground is the area where he wants to, you know, puts this tournament for the best, um, the best, like you know, fighters from like the different galaxies. So Judge Dread, Batman, and a few other different ones that have not been told about to fight in the, his uh, pit. Right off the bat, we already quickly to assume that Zero is pretty incredibly powerful because uh, one of the one of the creatures from um, Argulian uh, he attacks Zero the moment he comes out and he's unable to inflict any damage on him whatsoever Zero actually responds and he shoots like a blast from his hand completely immobilizing the um, the creature who was in his cell the creature slash man you know slash whatever Soon as Zero takes care of the Argulian, uh, Riddler actually shouts out to Zero, I've done what you've wanted, I lured Batman here, keep your end of the bargain, free me and you know, give me what you, uh, what, what's owed to me. <laughs> Zero actually responds back by saying, certainly I'll free you and here's your payment, you traitor. And he shoots a blast from, I believe it's like um, some kind of device 
a gizmo that actually like blasts like some kind of ray and it pierces the Riddler's heart, thus kill it, killing the Riddler, or so we see. So Zero goes ahead and announces all the warriors from the different worlds, which you have Mechanos, Mandroid, Slayer of a Thousands, you have Judge Dredd with his um, uh, little perp that he's taking care of the prisoner, you have the Galang of Nope, Champions of Champions, you have Brutux, Yannick, The Living Nightmare, Sandros, and of course Batman the Dark Knight of Gotham. Zero actually states that every year he celebrates this day specifically by bringing warriors from all different uh, worlds to do battle just for his own pleasure. So you already know that this guy's sick and twisted. You know, similar to like a Batman villain, one of Batman's uh, Rose Gallery. But um, what he does, he explains that he... Zero explains that the contest will take the form of a hunt, seven, and seven of them will be the hunters, the eighth will be the quarry. Basically, which is saying that there will be a predator chasing the prey. And the first um, contestant, the first um, uh, contestants to be chosen are, surprise, surprise, Batman, who is the prey, and Judge Dredd, who is the hunter. And there's really um, like a side by side cool shot where Batman says, "I kill for no man," and in turn, Judge Dredd, Judge Dredd says, "And I kill for no man's entertainment." After that, Zero uses his rod to transport both Judge Dredd and Batman to another dimension, to a warrior's pit where they can commence their uh, um, their chase, you know. And um, even Batman's inner force is like kind of confused why Zero uses Riddler to lure him there, then kills him just like an insect, and he fully establishes that rod that rod and Zero must have a it must be a being. Of incredible immense power. Once in this dimension, Batman is first to encounter the Gulag, who, if you remember, was the one who uh, who shot fire at Zero earlier on and was uh, taken immobilized from one of uh, Zero's rod. Uh, Batman's able to uh, fight him and just um, evade him before Dread jumps to this. Dread. Uh, Judge Dredd jumps to the scene and shoots him out clean cold with one of his pistols. Soon after, Batman is attacked by the Brutalix. With a uh, with his uh, sword, he nearly is able to behead Batman. Batman's uh, Batman uses uh, quickly able to dodge him, uses his batarang and ties him up, able enable him to restrain him onto a wall, where he cannot uh, attack no one. Judge Dredd uh, arrives at the scene where Batman was fighting the Brutog and he shoots him, he shoots his knee, which I'm thinking he actually shoots his kneecap off, you know, from the uh, the, the way how the blast looks in the um, art drawing. Batman gets so enraged that he once again, similar to how he punched him in Judgment on Gotham, punches Judge Dredd, you know, you can probably see one of his tooth like flying out, you know, but he punches him out and he says, I told you. Again, I don't, I didn't want your help. I do not walk like this. Shortly after Batman is telling off Judge Dredd, the Mechanos Mandroid attacks Judge Dredd and uh, Batman by blowing up a big chunk of the wall where the Brutalk, the Brutalks was tied up to. Batman, Judge Dredd and Judge Dredd's criminal begin to evade and uh, they're able to like avoid the uh, um, Android's blast. Uh, Batman actually stops for a while and takes. Batman takes a look at the riddle that Riddler left while he was chasing him back in Gotham City, and he deduces that like if Zero had that kind of power, he didn't really need Riddler in the first place, or are they in a whole riddle altogether? Judge Dredd believes that Zero's the one who transported us. Zero Zero's the one who transported him and Batman there. So he's the key to getting getting um, them both out. So they both agree that they'll work together to locate him. Batman then goes to higher ground and uses binoculars to locate Zero. 
he tells Judge Dredd that it would be quicker if I find quicker if I go alone. I can find him easier. I can actually get him easier. And uh, as soon as that that persistent android that attacked Batman just a while back ago, he attacks Judge Dredd. It was a hologram. After the hologram disappears, uh, Batman is immediately attacked by the Sarandos, the reptilian creature, kind of looks similar to Killer Croc, and they battle from the top of the uh, the top of the building where Zero was, the hologram Zero was, all the way down to the flight, all the way down the stairs. After a battle that sees Batman and the Serranos fall down a whole flight of stairs from the skyscraper building, Batman is able to grab him with his legs and f swing him onto a wall, thus crushing him. And he uses like a spear to like a spear just to hold him on his neck, like a trident without the middle, and it piece and it holds him onto the wall. Meanwhile, Judge Dredd was attacked by the. Um, the uh, android with the with rocket launcher and the bazooka and the gatling gun uh, judge red is able to take him out by using armor piercing bullets from his pistol which uh, goes in goes inside the android and dis uh, destroy uh, destroys him by by piercing through his inner core this now leaves two more of the combatants that judge dread and batman need to take care of which is the living nightmare and also the yanok the Yanok bursts to the scene, he quickly captures Judge Dredd in the net and begins to fight Batman. He is just about to sh shoot Batman before the Living Nightmare intervenes. Batman is able to evade as the Living Nightmare turns his attention to the Yanok and destroys him with his psychic powers, blasting his head which dismembers his whole body, his head, his legs all scattered across the battlefield. Using his psychic powers, the Living Nightmare goes. He goes to Batman, and he actually starts invading his mind. Batman actually, actually, Batman actually describes the experience as like claws are tearing my brain apart. Brain apart. As the Living Nightmare is summoning Batman's worst fear, the fears, there's a nice splash page of all of Batman's villains that um Living Nightmare summoned. So you have Bane, Poison Ivy, the Penguin, Killer Croc. Joker, Scarecrow, the Mad Hatter. Whilst Batman is paralyzed and unable to do anything, Judge Dredd arrives to rescue and briefly fights the Living Nightmare in combat. Unable to inflict any damage on Living Nightmare, he goes into his uh he goes into his arsenal and pulls out a phosphorus grenades, blasts it at Living Nightmare, which completely incinerates him. Now just le thus leaving Batman and Judge Dredd as the only combatants in the tournament that Zero, uh, Zero made. Judge Dredd uh, goes towards Batman, helps him up to his feet. Uh, they both Batman then demands Zero to transport them back to where Zero is located as he's done playing his game. Once transported back, Zero transforms into this large version of himself and he grabs Judge Dredd and Batman by his by their body bodies. As whilst in an uh, internal struggle with Zero, Batman starts to think over the riddle of it again and he he starts to make sense that Riddler wasn't actually talking about him but about Batman, he was talking about him. Thus he deduces that Riddler was behind this whole scheme to lure these fighters and you know lure Batman and Judge Dredd transfer them from their dimension just to play this game so it's just all an illusion Riddler powered the uh, Riddler acquired these powers by a scythe by a scepter that was just presented in front of him that's why he was able to turn to zero and transport Batman and Judge, Judge Dredd from their dimensions Riddler then tells Batman that he should send him home because they found out the big charade will happen. But um, there's still him and Judge Dredd are still alive. So he tells them that the winner of them two, he will send them back home. And because Batman doesn't kill, it gives him a big disadvantage and the advantage would then go to Judge Dredd. Judge Dredd really just like he's just completely had enough. He says, "Not if I have anything to say. It, not if I have any any say in it, creep." And then he points the gun at him. Whilst Judge Dredd is about to shoot Riddler, Riddler with the sphere.
gets in control of Judge Dredd's pistol and manages to manage Judge Dredd to aim it towards Batman's direction. Riddler then uh, gives out the riddle. Here's the last riddle for you. What's a what's got big ears, a cape, and a hole in the middle? And he insists Judge Dredd to pull the trigger. Judge Dredd shoots Batman being controlled from the Riddler and he shoots him right in the chest where Batman's yellow emblem symbol is. Uh, behind he has a bulletproof vest so the bullet trajectory bounces off Batman and aims on the Riddler's shoulder thus taking down the Riddler. Riddler then tries to grab the scepter again but before that Batman gives him a punch straight to the face saying you've done enough damage with this Riddler. Batman grabs the scepter and tries to figure out how he can transport it back to try how to he can transport him or Judge Dredd back to their, their dimensions to either Gotham C or Mega C one. Judge Dredd begins to argue with Batman saying that it belongs in Mega C one. The technicians will have a fine time examining it. And Batman says no, it belongs in Gotham C. You know, can't risk the device falling into like the wrong hands again. He'll take it and he'll destroy it. Batman, Batman then tells Judge Dredd, unless you have an issue with that, I'm taking it back to Gotham City and I'll destroy it. Judge Dredd gets right in Batman's face, confronts him, and then he responds, you know, no, have it your way. I'll allow you to go back to Gotham City and destroy the scepter. They both part ways, Batman goes back to Gotham City, Judge Dredd takes that prisoner he was with through the story and takes him back to Mega City 1 and that is the end of Batman Judge Dredd The Ultimate Riddle. So um, my thoughts on The Ultimate Riddle, um, I believe it's way more stronger than um, Vendetta in Gotham. But definitely falls short than judgment and judgment on Gotham is in between there, and here's why I feel like the artwork by Carl, uh, by Critchlow is uh, fantastic. You know, it, yeah, it really captures that kind of like apocalyptic kind of urban disaster, uh, like feeling to it. You know, especially when Batman and Judge Dredd get. You know, like uh, when they first get transported to where Zero is, you know, you has that nice splash shot of this kind of like Dungeons and Dragons, um, like cells where uh, Zero actually puts all the combatants in. Then when them two, when Batman and Judge Dredd and the pup that Judge Dredd is with throughout the story get transferred to the um, to the world where they have to fight all the other combatants, it's a really gritty, gritty place. The way it's got like this red sunlight throughout it. You know, as seen on the front cover, you know, and it just feels like a very, very like apocalyptic world, you know, which I thought that was very cool the way how Critchlow rendered the drawings. In some of the uh, drawings, you know, it's like a cross between Bisley and the art from, um, I'm not sure I know the artist, but one of my other favorite stories, uh, Birth of the Demon, featuring the featuring the history of um, uh, Rachel Go, like the origin story, you know, the artwork kind of falls in, the, the artwork that Critchlow, uh, the Critchlow does in this, is kind of falls in between one between them two, Bisley and the artwork in Birth of the Demon. One of the coolest pages I liked in the Oma Riddle was definitely when uh, Batman is being controlled by Livid Nightmare and it shows a display of all these villains, you know, which is very similar to the one Bisley shows in judgment on Gotham when Anderson goes into Batman's mind and it displays that page of all of Batman's like um you know like Batman's uh, history you know like of his villains you know it's like a collage of like what Batman is you know so I thought that was a definitely a good nod to the earlier the earlier story now artwork aside, where I feel uh, now artwork aside, story wise, why I think this, why I think the story is more stronger definitely than uh, Vendera and Gotham because in Vendera and Gotham, when Judge Dredd shows up, he immediately just pulls Batman for nearly the whole, you know, at least three quarters of the story, you know. So until the end, you don't even know why Judge Dredd and Batman are fighting, you know. Whereas when Batman and Judge Dredd, and uh, when Batman is first transported to this, um alternate reality and he sees and he comes in this um, uh, area where he sees like Judge Dredd locked up and the other 
you know warriors um locked up in their cells you know zero comes out and he explains like why he's doing this you know you know what what what's the purpose of all of this so the reader can understand okay what's kind of going on instead of just being thrown out into a brawl and it's really cool as throughout the story you know batman is thinking like you know why would zero do this you know he's not really like um fully uh He's not fully certain like what's going on is completely real and that like something is um and like something is going so like if something's going on like he feels like he's being had like he's being played that's why throughout it he keeps on going over the riddle the rid over the riddle that riddler leaves when he's um in gotham c you know and until the end you know in a weird way you kind of don't see that coming when riddler exposes himself as the one who's actually the one who actually made this whole um charade you know it's like a big big um plot twist because when riddler gets killed at the start of the story you know right in front of batman batman's like lean to believe that riddler's gone you know and from there it's not even Rid riddler is not even mentioned again just on the uh, riddle note that batman has you know but he's not seen or heard of until the very end you know so it's a really really cool way how they you know made it like a surprise at the end you know that riddler was actually you know zero you know and he duped batman you know he des made the ultimate riddle and batman was able to you know able to um he was able to uncover it and take the riddler down with a bit of judge dread's assistance of course say the only negative with this story is that um it's called batman's judge dread the ultimate riddle but it feels way more of a batman story than uh batman and judge dread uh because it, again it's riddler it's batman's villain batman's part of batman's rose gallery you know judge dread throughout the story is just take uh, is with this um he refers to him as a pup who he it was just about to arrest in mega city one before they transfer transferred him in when Riddler transferred into that um, combatant arena, you know, where they were going to fight, you know. So the whole time Judge Dredd is just, you know, when, when Batman is like taking out one of the um, other warriors, you know, Judge Dredd just shows up either to just like, you know, help him out or, you know, like um, like when he shoots one of their kneecaps up, you know. He's like he's playing secondary to him throughout the whole story because it is Batman who un uncovers the riddle at the end, you know. Judge Dredd is just uh, playing catch up with uh, Batman for the pretty much through the whole entire story, you know. And even at the end, when um, they say uh, Batman's saying he's going to take the the scepter, which uh, Riddler was able to use to you know create this whole illusion, you know, Batman's able to just take it back to Gotham City, and Judge Dredd was able unable to do anything, you know. So. Other than that, I definitely say it's better than Vendetta and Gotham, but it it's not as good as Judgment on Gotham. And I think, uh, and where ultimately falls down is um, in Judgment on Gotham, it's shared. Um, it, there's a good balance, you know, how Judgment on Gotham starts in Mega City One, then the story moves on to Gotham City, and how like um, what's it? Uh, Judge Dread, Judge Death, sorry, and the Scarecrow work together. Similarly, how Judge Dread and Batman. Uh, work together so there's a balance whereas obviously in ultimate riddle it's really just batman you know taking out all, all these enemies with judge red you know like uh, judge red is kind of like robin in this you know he's like really like just a sidekick you know just helping batman out anytime he needs help you know but it's batman who ultimately does you know take the riddler down you know so yeah um I, if i had to score this i'd say it's still short i'd probably give it a four out of five you know um you know i feel the pacing is very good you know and what i would say with this unlike obviously the pre uh, the predecessor of Vendor and gum you can actually read this story alone you know it really is strong enough for you to be to be classified as just a story just by itself you know it's got a nice start a nice middle and a nice end so yeah that's that was my full son batman ultimate riddle you know um if you get a chance try pick it up or if you had read it uh, please leave some comments um, and tell me like if you found it as interesting as I found it you know like I said this is my uh, second favorite out of the stories notice I didn't say best just my 
second favorite you know because i've always when i read these like back in you know when i was much younger in the 90s i always remember this and judgment of Go uh, judgment on gotham because just how the artwork always stood out man it was just always excellent so guys please um uh, any comments you know like um if you read the book you know just like Anything that I may have missed out, you know, let me know in the comments section. Always remember to subscribe and soon I'll be bringing back the final part of this um, epic crossover, which is Judge the Judges, Judge, Batman Judge Dread collection. And it'll be Die Laughing Part 4, featuring one of Batman's greatest nemesis. Thank you guys for taking time to watch this and take care because Richie Rich will be back.